We're here today in the sanctuary, and I'm going to do a series of talks about the stained glass windows in the sanctuary and the entry areas of the church. This in part responds to someone who suggested, after I'd done the conversation about the banners on the children's time, the second Sunday after Easter, whether I would do something about the windows. So the first window I want to talk about is the one of Andrew said to the crowd, or to more specifically Peter, if you look at the text, we have found the Messiah. This picture, this stained glass window is interesting. Jesus is clearly standing there, and there are four other figures in the picture. I think the person behind Jesus is Andrew, who is introducing him to the three who stand on the left-hand side of that picture. The right-hand side, if you're looking at it, the left-hand side of the picture itself. I think that those are an image of all people being invited, men, women, children, being invited to follow this Messiah, this one who is the Messiah. And just in case we're not sure that that's Jesus and that he is the Messiah, we can tell by the way his right hand is, and the figure that looks like this, that he is doing the chi ro in his hand, with his hand. And so a st standard artistic picture and use to signify who Jesus is, even by the way his hand is. The backdrop, or the background of the picture, is very Canadian. That does not look like the Sea of Galilee at all. It's very Canadian. And one of the interesting things about the bottom of this picture itself, not in the stained glass window, but the border at the bottom is, if you look carefully, there are maple leaves in that lower bottom, which again is a symbol that there's an intention of being Canadian about this, that this is the Messiah, not just who was in Palestine, but this Messiah is also the Messiah for people who live in Canada. The second stained glass window is of the feeding of the 5,000. And we can tell, I'll talk to the little boy first. The little boy, if you look at him, is wearing a satchel or a man purse. And in that satchel, he has two fish. You can see them sticking out. And in his hands, he has five loaves of bread. Very North American loaves, loaves of bread, but loaves of bread nonetheless. Five loaves and two fish. And so those of us who know the story know that well. Get that. Jesus, who is standing opposite him and being offered the five loaves and two fish, is standing there and what is he holding? He's holding two pieces of wood that are an X shape a prefiguring of the cross. The artist here has got Christ at the Sea of Galilee, quite clearly, there's a boat there, there's water, but prefiguring him as being the one who was crucified. What's even more interesting of the Jesus figure is the Jesus figure is dressed in purple, a royal color, but also a color of Lent. He's dressed like a king, not only is it a purple robe, but the brocade, gold brocade on the robe itself. There's no way that Jesus went like this when he was fishing or when he was down by the Sea of Galilee. The artist is telling us that this is the crucified king, that this one who is being offered the five loaves and two fish is not just one who walked among us, which he did, but he in fact is the king who will be crucified and rise again. So the artist here is prefiguring that for us. Now as with the first picture I talked about, there were maple leaves at the very bottom of the border. This time we have cues that to help us to understand the, the painting itself, or the stained glass window itself. The one with the two fish in the basket, and the other one with a crown. So again, the picture I've talked about in terms of the purple robe and the brocade, he is the king who carried the cross. This is the resurrection window. The risen Jesus is addressing Mary and Mary's looking at intently at him. There's some things to see about this passage, this, this um, stained glass window that reminds us of the passage from John. In the Gospel of John, someone who Mary thinks is the gardener comes up to her and asks her what she is weeping about, what's bothering her. And she's thinking this gardener says, where have you taken the body? Let me go to be where the body is. And the risen Jesus says to her, Mary. 
The text very clearly says, and turning from the turning, she looked at Jesus and recognized him as the risen Christ. It's interesting that the artist here has got that right. Notice that Mary's back is to the grave, to the tomb, and she's looking at Jesus. One of the things that's interesting then is that if we look only at the tomb, if we look only at the despair, we may not see the risen Christ. By turning from that despair, turning from that moment, we can see him because our sorrow is turned to joy as Mary's does in this picture. Jesus is pointing because he told her to go and tell the disciples, to go and tell the others. You'll notice that the hand, not the hand is pointing, but the other hand, you can clearly see the nail mark in it that the artist has captured. This is the crucified, risen Christ. Two other things to notice about the stained glass window itself. At the very top are two crosses, the Celtic cross, so the cross with the circles, the Celtic cross, and the St. Andrew's cross, the cross on its side, that looks like an X. These two crosses are typical of Scottish tradition. The Celtic cross not being explicitly just for Scotland, also any Celts in terms of Ireland as well. But these two are the two crosses that would dominate Scottish tradition. We are in St. Andrew's Church that has long Scottish roots. At the very bottom on the border, as we talked about in the first one, are back to maple leaves. And so the, risen, the crucified risen Christ is for Scots and for Canadians is for all. It's offered to all of us in our time and in our place. Christ is risen. The stained glass window tells us. The last in the row, so we've been going from south to north, the last in the row on the east side of the building is this stained glass window of Jesus' teaching. And it's not a typical picture of Jesus' teaching. I think that most of us would imagine him teaching outdoors. He appears to be in a building or on a day, on some kind of porch, um, not purely outdoors in a field. And those who are gathered around are not a large crowd. In fact, a smaller group. So maybe he's teaching disciples. But the caption is that Jesus went about teaching and healing. And Jesus did do that. Traveled around, went various places. This particular picture, as I said, the stained glass window, depicts a smaller group with Jesus and Jesus' teaching. He's holding a scroll in his hand. Maybe the artist is thinking about that moment in the synagogue in Nazareth, where Jesus taught from the book of Isaiah. That would, have been the, that would not have been the only time that Jesus used a scroll of the Old Testament to teach, but maybe that's the one that has got this particular artist thinking. The backdrop, further back, background, is of a typical, as we, as an artist sees it, of an early Palestinian town. And again at the bottom, we have more maple leaves, another sign of the Canadian-ness and Canadian feel. It's interesting that that particular wall, so the east wall, three of the four stained glass windows have the maple leaves on them. The other wall doesn't have that at all. It's just interesting how the two sides, and we'll talk about the west side in a at a later time, but it's just interesting how these stained glass windows um, have evolved. 